Packer Memorial Church was built in imitation of Gothic buildings of the 12th and 13th centuries. It represents a European religion Americanized. Lehigh Chaplain Reverend Elwood Worcester said, Packer Memorial Chapel, in spite of its windows, was and is one of the most beautiful colleges, college churches in America. In years past, there has been conversation about whether the space should be called a church or chapel. The term church puts religion above all, whereas the term chapel subordinates religion to other issues. In his essay titled Sermon in Stone, W. Ross Yates said that Lehigh is more fit to have a chapel than a church because of the secular learning. Before Packer Memorial Chapel, the university held services in Christmas Hall, which was a Moravian church. President Cope conducted services six days a week, from 8.45 to 9 a.m., and on Sundays, students marched to the Church of the Nativity. They were assigned seats in alphabetical order. The 15-minute services included praying, singing hymns, listening to organ music, reading scriptures, and reciting the creed. J. H. Pennington, class of 97, wrote about how students turned in a dime and a piece of paper guessing how long the sermon would be. Whoever guessed correctly got the dimes, with the average length being 17 minutes. Chapel service was mandatory until 1896. Rabbi Seth Gorin talks about his view of Packer Memorial Church. Chapel became not about going to a religious service, but going to a talk. It became about something beyond just what was going on in, in one's classroom study. University chaplain Lloyd Stevens said when chapel service was no longer mandatory, students insisted they be brought back because the sense of community was being negatively affected. We're in a different place today. The church is a symbol of spiritual presence and community, but we are a pluralistic campus and we made the church an interfaith space by mission, even if the stained glass continues to express an exclusively Christian sense of things. The, the role that I've seen the church play, yeah, I don't know as much about the, the history itself, but in terms of the current use, um, it seems to play a role for you know, campus-wide events. It's, you know, it's, there's so much space here, um, and you know, space can often be at a premium here on campus. The, but it seems to, you know, for university ceremonial use, you know, concerts are held in here, um, uh, memorial services are held here, baccalaureate, uh, Founders Day. Um, but I, you know, my sense is that it gets even more use for um, weddings. In 1879 and 1882, Asa and Sarah Packer passed away. As a memorial to them, their children, Mary and Henry, decided to build a church. Shortly after the planning began, Harry died, leaving Mary to complete the church on her own. She chose Addison Hutton of Philadelphia as the architect. Hutton had previously designed the library and gym. Once the church was complete in 1887, Mary turned it over to the trustees as owners. During this time, the students didn't understand why a church was built on their campus when what they really needed was more dorms. On October 13, 1887, the Masonic ceremony and the ceremony of the Episcopal Church celebrated the new church, marking the day as Founder's Day. In addition to commemorating Asa Packer, the church pays respect to specific professors in graduating classes. A grave is located in the south wall for Joseph Williams Richards, who passed away in 1921. A professor of engineering he was called Richards Plus for pioneering the exploration of chemical components of aluminum. Brass plaques display the names of graduated seniors from 1869 to 1964 around the church. They discontinued the plaques because space had run out. Renovations were made to the church in 1909 by replacing stained glass windows, rebuilding the pipe organ, rewiring electricity, and installing new lights. In 1969, the basement was turned into a coffee house, which students referred to as the catacombs. Even when you look at the history of the church, you see, um, on the one hand, Lehigh is, is set up to be an engineering school. Um, I mean, like, 
you know, if, you, if you look at the history, it's quite clear that the emphasis was on engineering as a way of um, bolstering uh, Bethlehem steel. At least that's how I, I understand Lehi's history. Um, at the same time that you have something that is very based on reason and logic, mm -hmm. you also have this church here, um, which um, you know, nowadays we often think about science and religion as being at odds with each other and the fact that the two were able to not just coexist but to be in some ways the mainstays of campus life. When one reads about chapel being mandatory, when one hears about the connection um, to the Church of the Nativity um, and the role that religion played in the um, founding families of Lehigh, it's clearly quite strong. While Lehigh has always been a place for engineers, Reverend Beardsley expressed a need for religion when he said, Science, engineering, and business simply cannot handle the personal and intimate problems of purposes and preferences. Democracy makes every person a moral executive. Moral freedom implies moral responsibility.